Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting lesson. In this video, we are working on step seven of our accounting cycle for SAT Corporation. We are going to be working on a balance sheet, particularly for this video. So when we're going to our balance sheet, we've already done our income statement and our statement of retained earnings. We are moving on to tackling our assets, our liabilities, and our equity. Uh, keep in mind, another word for equity is capital. We have already categorized all of our accounts on the adjusted trial balance. So at this point, we are now just going to be dealing with, let's take these off for the income statement. We are just going to be dealing with primarily these items right here with mm, an, a little bit of an exception. All right, so let's get started on our balance sheet. The first item that we're working with here is assets. Please keep in mind, if you want to work along with us as we tackle this balance sheet, we do have the blank Excel sheet available on our website. I will link to that in the description below. So when it comes to current assets, our focus is on recognizing all of those assets that we expect to be using up within one year or the operating cycle, uh, keep in mind there is a little bit of a difference there once you get into some more advanced accounting, but for the most part, just think of it, those assets that we will be using up their benefit within one year, right? So cash here, cash is always a current asset. Remember, there might be some exception if there is a cash equivalent, but in this problem, we're staying basic. Um, accounts receivable, that is also a current asset. Uh, we have supplies, supplies are current assets, and one more, prepaid rent. Keep in mind if we ended up paying more than the typical one year, then we might want to go ahead and uh, specify some of that as being non-current. Okay. Let's go ahead and total up all of those current assets. So you have 367,200 plus 75,000 plus 2,000, 12,000. We're going to add all of those items up and we get $456,200 for our total current assets. We still have a couple more assets here. We have our equipment and our contra asset, accumulated depreciation. That will go under our property, plant, and equipment also known as PPE. Sometimes you might hear it referred to as our fixed assets or our plant assets, but essentially those are our long-lived assets, which most of them would end up getting depreciated. So here we have equipment, and we're going to put that in the left-hand column to show that we are putting a list off to the left-hand side. And then less, since it's a contra, it's going to be taking away from the balance our accumulated depreciation on that equipment. Now let's go ahead and total up that amount there. I think I'm going to run out of space. So I'm going to be property, property plant, and equipment. Eh, good. Uh, we're going to be totaling off to the right-hand side. And keep in mind, we have equipment. We can use Excel for this. Equipment of 56,500 minus our accumulated depreciation. That gives us a book value of $55,800 for our equipment. One more step, we have to total those items up to find our total assets. We have current assets of 456,200, add in our PPE. 512,000 for our total assets. Let's move on to liabilities. For our liabilities, uh, we only have uh, three here. Let me see, we have our accounts payable, we have some salaries payable and unearned revenue. Cash dividends here has a balance of zero, so I'm going to omit that from my balance sheet. But keep in mind, we could always go ahead and list that and show the zero balance if we thought it would be useful for decision-making purposes. So since I only have those three liabilities, I'm not going to start a list. I'm not going to say current liabilities. I'm just going to list out those three liabilities. That is accounts payable, salaries payable, 
and unearned revenue. All right. And technically, since I only have those three, I don't really have to list them off to the left-hand side. Financial statement formatting can be a little interesting. Some textbooks, you'll see us make the list over here, and then subtotal. Other textbooks, you'll see, since this is our first list on this side, we could go ahead and put them all in the right-hand column. I'm going to go ahead and show what that looks like. Um, but it is kind of, it does differ from textbook to textbook. But since this is my first list, I technically don't have to go to the left-hand side. Both methods will work. Just check with your textbook or your instructor to see which one that they prefer. All right. And here we have our total liabilities. Beautiful. So, so far we see we have our total assets and our total liabilities. We already know that our basic equation that we use for the balance sheet is assets equals liabilities plus equity. So seeing our asset balance and seeing our liabilities balance, we know we're missing quite a bit in our equity section. So let's move on to our shareholders equity. Keep in mind when we are working on our shareholders equity, it's usually separated into two main areas our paid in capital area, which we will tackle up here, and then also our uh, area below, which is going to be our retained earnings section. So when we're dealing with our paid in capital, there are five items that go into paid in capital. Any common stock, any preferred stock, any paid in capital in excess of par for common stock, paid in capital in excess of par for preferred stock, and then also paid in capital from the sale of treasury stock. So when we're looking at our adjusted trial balance here, uh, one, two, three, four, five, yes. These are the items that would typically go in our paid in capital section. Common stock, preferred stock, and then their pick accounts, and then pick from sale of treasury stock. So all of those five items. Here, since paid in capital from sale of treasury stock currently has a balance of zero, I'm going to, again, omit that, but keep in mind, if you wanted to show that balance, you could. So I'm going to start by listing out those items. Common stock, I'm going to do my list off to the left-hand side. Paid in capital. <laughs> Preferred stock, 100,000, paid in capital in excess oop, of car. Can't do that. Let's fix that. That is par value. Perfect. And 105,000. Great. So our next step is going to be to total up our paid in capital section. Keep in mind that that will simply be these four items added up. So I'm going to use a little Excel right now, add those four items up, and I get a subtotal of 365000 for this section. Now keep in mind, as I said earlier, our stockholders equity section is separated into two sections, paid in capital, which we just did, and then retained earnings. Now, when we take a look at our retained earnings, notice that currently on our adjusted trial balance, these are one of the exceptions I was referring to, it says that we have a zero balance here. However, this is where things get a little different. We are going to be grabbing the new retained earnings that we did in our statement of retained earnings. Keep in mind that while it had a beginning balance of retained earnings, or sorry, beginning balance of zero, we increased it by our net income from our income statement. And then we decreased it by our dividends. There's our dividends shown there. And we found that the new balance of retained earnings on January 31st was 86,500. That number from our second financial statement, the statement of retained earnings, is going to flow through to our balance sheet and we will list it right here. 86,500 
86,500. This is why the order of the financial statements are so important. We have to make sure that we're grabbing the correct number from off on our other statement. Okay, we have one special uh, scenario for this company. There is one more thing that we have to do and that is deal with our treasury stock. Now, if you don't remember from your reading, keep in mind that treasury stock are amounts of our own shares, so it's the corporation shares, that we have purchased back from the public. So we have purchased our own shares from the public and that went into a special account called treasury stock. Um, those shares that were initially issued are already included up here, but the amount of or the cost of those shares that we purchased back are also included in that treasury stock. So what we need to do is we have to basically minus out that balance in treasury stock here, $20,000 to show that we have purchased that amount back. Now that we have all of those different items, we can total up our shareholders' equity. And we find that we have 365,000 for paid in capital, 86,500 for retained earnings. And then we have to deduct out our treasury stock here, finding that we have 431,500 in total shareholders' equity. And there's one more thing that we need to do. We want to total up our liabilities and shareholders. Eh, not enough space. Shareholders equity, I'll type out the whole thing. You'll see it here. There we go. And when we go ahead and total up our liabilities, 80,500 plus our shareholders equity from above, we get 512,000 for our total liabilities and shareholders equity. And that number should match up to what we have for our total assets, which you can see here. There we go. Total assets, 512,000. Total liabilities and shareholders equity, 512,000. We now equal, we have satisfied our formula that we use for the balance sheet. We are good to go. All right, so in our next video, we usually don't show this in the accounting cycle for these types of academic problems, but in the real world, there is a fourth financial statement, which is a statement of cash flows. Um, technically, since this is the first month of operations, the statement of cash flows isn't going to be too difficult, but I do think it would be beneficial if we included a video for that. So we are going to be attempting the statement of cash flows for this particular company. So go ahead, if you're interested in the statement of cash flows, watch the next video in this series. If not, you can skip on to closing entries. But as always, until next time, happy studying.